Hi everyone, so I recently posted a video about the new Comet C2022E3 that'll be visible in late January or early February 2023 and I'd received quite a few comments both on this YouTube channel as well as various other sites um, asking questions about it and uh, also asking what the best time would be for, for uh, the viewers to be able to see this comet and I wasn't able to keep up with all the questions coming in so I decided to make a second video where I will address some of the questions that I had received as well as go over some more interesting facts about this comet such as um, what exactly is a comet and what is it that we're looking at, uh, what the comet will actually look like through let's say binoculars or a telescope or through your camera uh, just because I know a lot of news sites can sometimes hype things up a little bit too much and that can lead to disappointment so I want to give you a realistic assessment of what you'll be able to see with just your eyes or with various kinds of equipment or scopes and uh, I'll also tell you what you can do if you live in a light polluted city and you can't get out of the city or you don't have a telescope or a camera but you still want to see the comet uh, so stick around to the end for that and lastly at the end of the video I'll also tell you step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how you can find out what the best time would be from your location uh, because I had received a lot of requests for that and I wasn't able to reach every single uh, comment that I had received about that so uh, stick around to the end of the video and let's get started. So what is a comet and what's the big deal about seeing one? Well, comets are very large, dirty snowballs the size of a mountain that are floating through space, orbiting the sun at tens of thousands of kilometers an hour. And when they get closer to the sun, uh, the sun heats up the surface of the comet, which causes some of the frozen gases in there to sublimate, which means that they turn from a solid into a gas. And that creates a tail behind the comet, and that tail of dust and gas is then lit up by the sun. So some comets can get really bright, like Comet Hayataki, hale Bob, but most of the comets don't quite get that bright. And the last bright comet that I had seen was Comet Neowise in the summer of 2020. So this comet is expected to get to naked eye visibility, but just barely. So it should be around magnitude 5, we're thinking, at the brightest, but you can never really be sure how bright a comet is going to get, so sometimes they can surprise you. So it's worth keeping an eye out. And this comet is expected to reach naked eye visibility from a dark site. But if you're wondering what you're going to be able to actually see with just your eyes, well, I've created some of these uh, these diagrams based on my previous pictures of comets, and I've adjusted them, adjusted the brightness and size and all of that to give you an estimate of what I think the comet will look like with your eyes or with various kinds of equipment. So the comet is expected to reach magnitude 5, which is considered within the realm of naked eye visibility from a dark site. However, the light of a comet is spread out unlike a star. So a magnitude 5 comet will be fainter than a magnitude 5 star because the light is going to be spread out over the nucleus of the comet and the tail of the comet. So I'm expecting this comet to look a bit like the Andromeda galaxy from a dark site. So if you have ever looked up and seen the Andromeda galaxy, it'll be something like that. So uh, this is a diagram I made based on my previous images of some comets to give you an idea of what you can expect from a dark site. So this will be uh, if you're live if you're let's say 15 20 minutes outside of a small town or maybe an hour or hour and a half away from a larger city uh, and you can get to what we call Bortle 3 skies which is you can see down to about magnitude 6 so it will be a fairly dark sky and if you are in a city unfortunately a magnitude 5 comet might be below uh, the the level of visibility for you from a city if you have a pair of binoculars something like this or any pair of binoculars will do that should definitely make it a lot easier to see the comet and find it and this is roughly what I'm estimating the comet will look like with a pair of binoculars uh, I usually recommend some 7 by 50s or 10 by 50 binoculars uh, those are usually a good starting point but basically any kind of binoculars will do the job and uh, yeah you should be able to see the nucleus of the comet as well as perhaps a hint of the tail from a darker sky and from a light polluted location or from the city you might just be able to make out the nucleus with binoculars now if you have a telescope something like this or this or some binoculars like this then you should be able to get a better view of the comet and it'll look something like this from a dark site 
and you should be able to see the nucleus and the tail. However, from a light polluted location, you might just be able to make out the nucleus again. And from a dark site, you might also be able to see some of the some of the greenish color of the nucleus, but it will be harder to see the color. Now, if you have a medium-sized telescope, such as this 8-inch Dobsonian telescope, here is a representation of what you can expect to see. The nucleus of the comet will appear brighter and larger, and you're likely to be able to see a bit more detail in the tail as well. And if you have a scope like this, well, I can't actually tell you what it would look like through a scope like this because I've never actually seen a comet from a scope like this before. So I am hoping that this will be my first time with this scope. So personally, I intend to also image this uh, comet instead of just trying to look at it visually. And uh, the good thing about imaging is that with a camera of any sort, you can actually get a lot more of the detail and color uh, than what you can see with your eyes, even with a fairly large telescope. So if you have a fairly basic camera, something such as this one even, you can still sell, get some good shots. And uh, this is about what I'm expecting you can get with a camera like this. Uh, with a basic non-tracking tripod. So you should be able to get the nucleus and maybe a bit of the tail as well. And you should be able to capture maybe a little bit of color in the nucleus as well. And if you do have a tracking mount of any sort, some sort of, uh, you know, an Ioptron Sky Tracker uh, or the Skywatcher Star Adventurer or anything like that, or even an actual telescope mount, uh, you can use a small telescope or a fairly long lens to get images uh, similar to this, I would say. So this comet, of course, is not going to be anywhere near as bright as NeoWise was in 2020, but you should still be able to get really good images with long exposures. And they should show significant color in the nucleus as well as show the tail quite well. And then if you have a serious astrophotography setup, something like this, you should be able to get very nice bright images, uh, something like this and show a good amount of detail in the tail as well as show the colors of the nucleus very well. And you should be able to do this uh, even if you don't have very dark skies. So uh, I live in a fairly small town and uh, my skies are about Bortle 6 or so for any astronomer out there and I'm expecting to be able to get some pretty good shots as long as the sky is clear. And lastly, uh, what do you do if you don't have a camera, you don't have access to dark skies and you don't have a telescope? Well, I've still got you covered. So closer to the end of January, here's what I'm planning to do. I'm going to be using one of my big scopes uh, to live stream a view of the comet directly to my YouTube channel. So if you can't get away from the city lights or you don't have the equipment to image or see this comet yourself, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you are notified when I am live streaming or when I have scheduled the live stream and you'll be able to see the comet slowly move in front of the stars over a fairly short period. So you should be able to see the colors in the nucleus. You should be able to see the dust tail. So I haven't decided what camera I'm going to be using on this big scope right now, but I will be using a color camera so I can live stream in full HD color. So make sure to tune in for that if you aren't out there imaging or viewing it yourself. So here are the step-by-step -step instructions on where and when to see the comet from your location. All you need for this is a smartphone. So first thing we're gonna do is open up the Play Store on your Android phone or the App Store on your iPhone. So I'm going to click on Play Store on my screen. And what you want to do is search for Stellarium. So that is a free application that you can download. So that's the Stellarium mobile star map. Uh, the plus version, you have to pay for that, but I haven't seen any need to get the plus version at the moment. So I'm using the Stellarium mobile, the free version. So you download that. Now I've already downloaded it on my phone, so I'm just going to hit open. And it'll automatically find out the time uh, and location for where you are. So uh, this is what it looks like when you start this application. So what I'm going to do, uh, because the comet right now is uh, going to be below the horizon. So at the top right of your phone screen, you'll see a little magnifying glass icon. So click on that magnifying glass icon and type in the name of the comet. So C 
slash 2022E3. That's the name of, of that comet. That's going to be getting higher up in the sky at the end of January or beginning of February 2023. So click on that comet and that'll tell you exactly where the comet is right now. Now looking at my screen, the comet is just below the ground right now so I can't see it but it's pretty faint right now anyway so um, I'm going to wait till the till closer to the end of January to actually start trying to image this comet so here's what we are going to do now at the bottom right of your screen uh, you can see that uh, the current time which in my case is 2024 that's 8 24 p.m. so click on that time and when you click on that time, it pulls up this clock. And what uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that up a little bit higher to make it bigger. There we go. Now you can see the date and the time. So what we're going to do is I will change the date from January 8 to let's say January 27. So as you can see, I'm changing the date and the comet on the screen is getting higher and higher up. So as the month of January goes on, the comet is going to keep moving higher and higher in the northern sky. So that's from the northern hemisphere. So uh, looking at the time, it's currently set to, let's say it's set to 825. I'm just going to change that and set the time to, uh, let's say 1030 p.m. So now I can see that on uh, January 27, 2023 at 10.30 p.m. the comet is going to be fairly high up in the sky from my location. Uh, so it'll be just above the Little Dipper. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, it is just above the head of the Little Dipper and between the Little Dipper and the Big Dipper. So this is the constellation of Ursa Major, the Big Bear. And you've probably seen this saucepan looking uh, shape up in the sky, that's the Big Dipper. And this one over here, this is Ursa Minor, which is the Little Dipper. And the tail star in this Little Dipper is Polaris, the Pole Star. And the bright star just below the comet here is Kochab. So that's where you'll be able to see the comet. And um, so uh, that's how you can figure out for your time and location exactly how uh, to find the comet and when it's going to be well positioned. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click anywhere on the screen and that'll take away this time and date window. There we go. Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that if you move around and take a look, you'll notice that in the west, the moon is still up at that time. Now, I don't want the moon to be interfering with, um, with our view or imaging attempts of the comet. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is click on the moon and at the bottom right of your screen, you'll see that button that says center with a star in crosshairs. Click on that and that'll center the moon. Now we're gonna click on the time at the bottom right of the window again, that says 2232. Click on that and drag that up a little bit to make it larger. Now, if I change the uh, date, as you can see, I'm going from January 27 to January 30, to January 31, February 1st. See, the moon gets bigger and bigger and we don't want that. So we want the moon to be as small as possible or, you know, as, as low of a phase as possible. And preferably, we want the moon to be below the horizon when we image. So late January, I think, would be better. So as I move these dates down from, you know, January 29, January 28, I can see that the moon is lower and lower in the sky each of those days. And as I increase the time, so this is 10 p.m., 11.30, 12.30, the moon gets lower and lower on the horizon. And you can zoom out on the screen as well. Just use your fingers to zoom out. Um, now, looking at January 27, I can see that after about, uh, after about, let's say, 12.30 p.m., the moon is fairly low in the sky. January 27, uh, let's do 11.30 p.m. So this is January 26, January 27. Okay, so let's say January 26, 11.30 p.m. 
the moon is quite low in the sky and as you can see the moon is not even quarter full so it shouldn't interfere much with our view of the comet so it looks like this will be a pretty good time and uh, on January 27th maybe around midnight would also be a pretty good time the moon will be low enough from my sky by that point so that it shouldn't interfere very much but ideally you want the moon to be as uh, as small as possible so maybe January 26th or 27th either one of them work fine but now if I scroll back to where the comet was which was in the north so I'm just going to go back to the north there we go so that's where the comet is and you can see the comet at this point is going to be uh, oh, I'm just gonna search for it again I lost it see 2022 e3 there it is so you can see it's just in front of the little dipper and just between the little dipper and the big dipper so now I will be able to find the comet and if I look at the directions down here that's north and that's east so the comet will be in the north northeast from my location at that time and if you found this video helpful, consider sharing it with your friends and family. And remember to hit the subscribe button and the like button. And that really helps this channel out so I can make more videos like this in the future. Thanks for stopping by.